we have time for maybe one question from for given to each of the uh, panelists. Uh, so, Dima, if you could choose your question first and answer succinctly and strongly, but mainly shortly. Yes. <laughs> because the next thing is lunch. Uh, the question, can you hear me? Okay. The question is, the only way to win the battle for control over Palestinian Israeli narrative on campus is to win over the moderates who are on the fence. How can SJP groups operate effectively and present their message without being labeled as extremists? I don't think I need to speak for the students. Our role at Palestine Legal is not to tell them what to say. And uh, do they seem extremist to you? I don't think so. Um, and I think this is, this is part of the problem, that uh, students uh, it should be able to get their message across and they're doing it effectively and that's the problem that uh, that Israel advocacy groups are seeing that they're doing it effectively and that's where the repression comes in so uh, you know I, I think they are getting uh, moderates so to speak off the fence and they're there and that's why we're, we're seeing all of this suppression so that would be my answer to that question and I think you know they're, they speak very well for themselves, so. Thanks. Um, Amani, which choose, question are you choosing? Sure. Um, this question comes from a student leader in an SJP in New York City. It says, what are, what's your advice for those of us who are constantly getting ostracized and repressed for being active in the Palestinian liberation movement, especially being in a city like New York that has a large demographic of pro-Israelis and Zionists? Um, from experience, my biggest piece of advice is to remain consistent and never get disheartened because there's a reason why it is so stressful being in our position and why we're facing such strong adversaries. It's because what we're saying is threatening. That's literally all we have. All we have on our side are the facts and the truth. And we can go up against rhetoric and talking points all day, every day, but the truth is always going to prevail, and that is terrifying for the status quo. So just remain consistent and never lose, lose hope in that. Um, this question says, uh, why does an SJP work on all campuses to educate student leaders so they don't have to attend all expense paid trips to Washington DC and attend the APAC conference? Um, I think that's something that as, you know, people are trying to do. To have an SJP at a university, you need people that want to start an SJP. And it's growing. Eventually, I think it'll get there. But um, we're, I think, well behind APAC and these other organizations. They have a lot of money, and they've been doing this for years. So um, I think we're making a lot of progress. But we need support from people like you. So thank you very much. <laughs> So um, I know that uh, Dima, Amani, and Ahmed will be around for you to ask questions, um, talk with them some more. Again, just one quick plug for Nora Barrows Friedman book about the SJP movement. I, are you in it, Ahmed? No. Oh, it's, it's, yeah. So you, you can learn a lot more about the SJP movement from these wonderful people and more about Palestine legal. If you just think how much money goes into the discourse suppression organizations at, that Dima mentioned a little bit, all the, pa Palestine, all the panelists mentioned a little bit, Palestine Legal has three attorneys and one administrative person. It's amazing what the needs are. You can get more information about Palestine Legal outside. You can talk to Dima, obviously. There's lunch, I think there's a box lunch awaiting everybody over here, and then the next, the next session is supposed to start at 1.15, so probably bring your box lunch back, and uh, see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.